Hey, the first thing I ought to say before I preach is thank you to Pastor Luke and Pastor Terry. I watched both of you guys on the YouTube. You know you can do that each week. You can watch the pastor on YouTube off of our Facebook page. And I watched both of you guys, and you did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Didn't they do good? Didn't they do well? I don't want the grammar Nazi after me. They did well. And uh, things are going here. God's working. God's moving. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We're not trying to build something to ourselves. We're not interested in building High Point Nazarene just to ourselves. We're interested in building the kingdom of God. And he's moving here. And praise his name. I look out and I see uh, couples that, that he's working in your home and in your marriage that, that we've been praying with and families. And praise God. Praise God. I wonder if anybody can imagine where the text will be today. Can anybody imagine what book we're in? Ephesians. If you have your Bibles, let's open to Ephesians. I, I trust you will. Ephesians chapter 5. We're moving our way through in these summer Sundays. And we're into the fifth chapter today. Verse 1. Imitate God, therefore. Whoop, got to stop. Why do we have to stop? The word therefore is right there. Let's find out what it's there for. What's Paul trying to say to us? Well, let's review where we've been because the word therefore is that connecting word. He's connecting what he has said to what he's going to say. And he's saying, here's what I said, but, but be, because of that, this is what you have to listen to. We learned that, that Paul is very much aware of disunity in the world, in his body, in the culture, and certainly in our spirit. There's disunity. And he writes to us that Christ came to unify. It was his plan from the beginning to bring unity into the world. And so he has talked throughout the beginning of the book about unity. Unity in the, in the body, but unity in our hearts because of the work of the cross. We learned in chapter 4 that, that um, there's one Lord. There's one faith. There's one baptism. There's one God and Father of all. And Paul stresses unity in the body of Christ. He goes on to say from there, we're unified, we're one heart, but we have many gifts. And if you remember, I preached right before I went on vacation about how God wants you and me to be involved in the ministry. He doesn't want 20% of the people doing 80% of the work. He wants 100% of the people doing 100% of the work. And everybody has a part to play. Everybody. And if we're going to be on display, like he says in chapter 3, verse 10, for the heavenlies, if he's going to put you and me on display, then we need to live holy lives. We need to be different from the world. If we look like the world, how can we be on display? We just mix in. And so Paul says to us, and Pastor Luke preached to you, about going from the old man to the new man. Put away the old man, Paul says, and be transformed into the new man. Pastor Terry preached to you but some practical things. Paul says if you're, going to be, if you're going to live like that, then some very practical things to do would be to watch how you talk. Stop stealing. Be people of integrity. And he says now in chapter 5, after saying all of that, he says, imitate God, therefore. Imitate God. Be like God. Be like the God who created you, like the God who died for you. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. Live a life filled with love. Some of the crabbiest people I know are Christians. Come on, folks. If we're going to ever be set apart, if we're going to ever be on display, if God's ever going to be able to point to us and say, that's what I died for, it'll be when we live lives of love. Love pouring out. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. 
Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes. These are not for you. Wow, I didn't plan to say this. So uh, let let me not stand behind the podium. Let me stand over here. Because I didn't plan to say this. But friends, God is not pleased when his people tell jokes about the president. I'm just telling you. I know they're funny. I know they are. But how can I pray for the president and then make fun of him? How can I do both of those things? I'm just challenging you as leader here. Let's be different. I'm not saying you have to agree with the political. I'm not saying you have to agree with the decisions. I'm not saying it. But I am saying, let's pray for our president. Am I on? Okay. Didn't hear one amen. <laughs> I didn't hear one amen. Maybe you didn't get that. Oh, well, let's go on. Let's, we can pretend I didn't say it if you want. Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes, these are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You could be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. There's nothing wrong with you and me having things. There's nothing wrong with you and me wanting to have things. But the question is, can you have joy if you don't get those things? Janice, I'm going back on vacation. (laughs) I used to... Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Don't participate in the things these people do. Do you get the impression he's talking to you and me about being set apart? He's talking to us about being different. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. And that's going to be our text today. Live as people of light. Ephesians 5, 9, or 5, 8. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. I don't think that means you and I should walk around with a spiritual flashlight. I don't think that's what it means. I don't think it's up to us to judge. But I do think what happens is, as we live as people of light, light exposes darkness. Does it not? And I think what Paul is saying is, if you live a compromised life, you're not going to expose anything. You're just going to blend in. So live a life that's set apart so that your life exposes. Friends, you and I don't have to tell people what to do and what not to do. Let's let the Spirit of God do that. Let's you and me be people of light. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. This is why it's said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Let's go back to verse 8. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord, so live as people of light. Wow, that's good. That's good writing, Paul. Live as people of light. Imitate God, therefore. Live as people of light. I think Paul's talking to you and me individually. I think he's talking, he's talking to Mike, and he's saying, don't, don't speak with coarse talking or obscene stories. I think he's telling me, don't steal. I think he's telling me, stop telling lies. I think he's telling me, don't let the sun go down on your anger. I think he's telling me, live as a man of love. 
I think there's an individual slant to Paul's writing. He's talking to you and me as individuals. But there is a community aspect, too, to what he's talking about. He's talking about us. Live as people of light. Individually, but collectively. All of you, together, live as people of light. Love. Integrity. Worship. Be set apart. You're on display, Paul says. You're on display for the heavenlies. Chapter 3, verse 10. And when we're on display, we show God's great wisdom and His great plan and His power. Now, when I was on vacation, um, I took some pictures that I want to show you. So, Nathan, if you'll put picture number one up. Uh, this, uh, This is about a... I, I guessed about a 1,500 or 2,000-seat worship center in Columbus. Janice and I happened to be down there. We went to church with our son, Drew. This is where he attends. It's the Columbus Vineyard Church. And um, a little bit like High Point, you see a lot of empty seats, especially, Nathan, if you go to the next slide, see the empty seats? <laughs> That's where we were sitting. By the time the service was over, we were full, just, just like I felt like I was home. But, but let's go back to slide one, Nathan. Full band, lights, I mean the whole deal, the whole deal. Now you can't see it you, because it's kind of dark, but in the, in the bottom of the picture, there's an usher who's standing with his back to the platform. So he would be standing like this in the aisle. He was standing here and helping people get seated. All the music was going on back here. People, I said people were coming in, so he's helping people get seated. And as he's helping people get seated, he's singing the songs. It was so cool. He's just singing the words of the songs, raising his hand, helping this person get seated, raising his hand, helping this person. It was the coolest thing. And he was probably the oldest person that, that I saw that day. A lot, of, a lot of the group was younger, but he was, he was, he was all in. He was all in. And uh, I just I wanted you to see that, and I'm going to make a comment in a minute. Uh, Nathan, uh, we've already seen that, that second one. Uh, the third one, now it's blurry. I don't know why the camera, my camera was blurry. Maybe because I was trying to take it, like, you know, not be obvious. But it got blurry. These were, as you can see, dancers. And I got to tell you, it just didn't do anything for me. It, it didn't help move me closer to God. I, but the Lord spoke to me about being critical. Is it okay, friends? for some things to take place in our service that may not be what I like? Is it okay for those things to still happen and we can still worship God? You see, the tendency for us is to take off now on critical. And if we allow it, if we allow the enemy, (laughs) he can distract me for the rest of the service. And I miss worship. And I miss what the pastor is going to say. And I miss the prayer time because it's those dancers. Is, is that hitting home with anybody? Is, is, does anybody understand what I'm saying? When you and I come to church, we don't come as the audience. God God is the audience. We are the worshipers. We are the worshipers. It's not about what pleases me. It's what pleases Him. I don't know if you like stick ministry or don't. But friends, if those kids that were doing that could get a truth in their heart that God's not dead, I'm okay with that. Let's go to the next one. Um, I just kind of wanted you to see what was around me. I mean, this is a, this is a huge place. And look at, look at the soundboard. And I think, Nathan, I think the next one has the sound, the, yeah, the other side. Now, you can't see it well, but there's a guy standing in front of that big soundboard. Can you see how big that board is? There's a guy standing there, and I was right behind him. 
And so I watched him. This guy is mixing sound, but he's singing, and he's praising the Lord while he's mixing. And he's raising his hands, and he's mixing, and he's raising. It was the most awesome thing. It was the most awesome thing. And I thought, if, if we could come and run the soundboard or, or be up here or teach Sunday school or, or go to the nursery or, or usher or whatever we're doing, if we could do it as unto the Lord and not just because it's our job and they can't get anybody else to do it, I thought, how, how cool is that? I, I mean, I was blessed, you guys. I, I, it's, it's not a Nazarene church, but so what? I mean, those labels sometimes get in the way. Come on. And I'm standing there, and the, and the Holy Spirit is just coming over me in waves. And it was the most beautiful thing. Do I have another one from there? No. This is, it, go ahead, Nathan. This is the next Sunday. Of vacation. That other one was the first one. Non Nazarene, 1,500 people, big, you know, almost a production type thing, and yet tremendous worship. And then we go to Abe and Courtney's church, and that's them. And there was about 40 of us, I think, or 50 of us. So I went, I slipped to the back and took a picture. I mean, everybody that was there that day, you can see, and, and you could count them. Presence of the Lord. It, it doesn't matter if it's a big church or a little church. It doesn't matter if it's a Nazarene church or a non naz It doesn't matter. Well, go to the next one. Yeah, look at the pray. Just simple. Two keyboards. That's it. That's all I had. Two keyboards and two ladies sitting on a stool. The one on the left was about ready to drop a baby. I'm telling you, I thought we were going to deliver that day. She, <laughs> she's about this big. And, but just praising the Lord, just worshiping. Go to the next one. And that, that's one of the best uh, piano players I know. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Some of you don't, that don't know my family, that's my daughter. Okay, let's go to the next one. And then we went from there to um, the district assembly of that district in West Virginia where Abe was ordained. And I took this picture because it was different than the other two settings I was in. All of a sudden, now we're in a district setting. And there was a lot of people. It's a big tabernacle there in West Virginia. And it reminded me of our district at North Central Ohio that's made up of about, oh, somewhere around 60 churches, give or take. And um, our district superintendent has started talking about how together we are better. Isn't that true? Yes. Together we're better. We're stronger. We have more gifting together. We can encourage together. And, and so I thought about our district, and, and, um, and it reminded me that when I got back and I was going through all my mail, that on the second Saturday of September, there's going to be a district Sunday school rally in Worcester. Our district and the South Central District so now you're talking, oh, 100 and probably 130 churches or so are going to come together, and we're going to go to Worcester the second Saturday of September. And I know that right away probably a lot of you can't go. You, you have conflicts. But I'm going to go, and I'm going to drive the church van, and if anybody would like to go, um, I'd like to take you. And uh, we'll be up at Worcester all day, and there's going to be an emphasis on prayer. Rob McCorkle a name I think you know is going to be there, and Ron Frizzell, and uh, a guy you may not know named Corey Jones, who I do know, great man of prayer. And I just wanted to let you guys know that. We'll give you more details as, as they unfold, but I wanted to get that into you. Now, is there, are there any more? Oh, oh, that's Ava. She's ready for the pool. Sorry about that. that my personal pictures got in with the... We can... We can yeah. She's a beauty. She loves her papa. She loves papa. Okay, let's move on. What's our motto? Know God, love others, serve all. 
Do you think, um, do you think if we lived out knowing God, loving others, and serving all, we would be living as children of light? I think we'd, I think we'd meet Paul's, Paul's goal for us, to live as children of light, to know God, not know about God. See, there's a huge difference, huge difference. We don't want to just know about God. We want to know God. And for you and me to know God, we've got to dig into his word. We've got to hang around his people. We've got to worship. We, we've got to spend time communing with him. How do you get to know each other? Well, you hang out. That's how I get to know people. I hang out with them. That's how I get to know God, is to hang out with him. And I think the day, the day has come and gone where the church just talks about praying. It's time for us to pray. It's time for us to know God. These, um, these children that, we, that I read names for today, and they're going into the next class, um, unfortunately, a lot of those children don't come to our Sunday school. There may be reasons for that, some of where the church has been over the last few years. I, I don't know what the... But, but I'm challenging us as leader to make Sunday school a priority. I'm challenging every one of us to make Sunday school a priority. We are working now to have a full menu of classes for adults when September comes. So after Labor Day, there's going to be, there's going to be options for you as adults. Bible studies and, and, and other kinds of classes to be in. We already have a couple of classes back here that meet, but we want to expand that. And I'd like to challenge every family to start coming to Sunday school. And... Um, be a part of a small group study to know God. I think we can do that. I think we can do it. Let's get our kids here. Let's get our teens here. Um, Pastor Luke's ready to run and, and have a couple of, of, of teen classes on Sunday mornings. And as I said, we're looking to expand. And I, I'm, I'm just not feeling at liberty to share yet because we, we don't have it all in place. But I'm telling you, that's what's coming. And I want to challenge you. Another thing I think that's really important that, that we're lacking, and I've been talking to God about it, he's been talking to me about, is corporate prayer. Us coming together as a body of Christ to pray for our services. And so after Labor Day, we're, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you to, to consider heavily coming before Sunday school and spending time praying and calling out to God as a, um, as a body of believers. I've talked with the praise team. I've talked with the nursery and the young children's, and, and, and that'll impact them. And, and everybody is willing to make adjustments so that we can come together and pray as a, as a body on Sunday mornings, praying that God would move. Friends, we want to see God change Delaware, Ohio. God's not going to change Delaware, Ohio just because we have a nice little program here. He's not going to change Delaware, Ohio just because we have an event. The only way Delaware is going to be changed is if we come together as the body of Christ and pound heaven. Uh, somebody sent me this, and I thought I'd share it with you. I don't even know really who the writer is, so I won't say his name, but here's what he wrote. Several years ago, I went to do a workshop in Buenos Aires, Argentina, in a church called Waves of Love and Peace. It was a rather dynamic church with services 24-7. Did you get that? Services 24-7 to accommodate the crowds. You know what 24-7 is? All the time. Because so many people were coming to the church. I remember sitting in the pastor's office waiting to preach the 10 a.m. service. And he came and said, You'll have to preach the early Sunday morning service. Because so many are coming to Christ in the 9 p.m. service, we cannot close it. So I said, when is the early morning service? He said, 1 a.m. So I drank coffee and spoke to 2,000 people at 1 a.m. Amazing to say the least. I asked Pastor Hector, why the astounding growth? He said, follow me. We went into a room behind the pulpit area and there were 70 people laying on their faces praying toward the pulpit. There are 70 
that come for each of our 13 services. What he said, I will never forget. He said, what is behind me determines what happens in front of me. Wow. We've got to come together and pray. It's not going to happen just because the band practices some songs and the pastor has a sermon prepared. We've got to pray, friends. We've got to come together and pray. So I'm calling our church to pray. Starting after Labor Day, we're, we're, getting all the, the, we're getting the schedule in place, but I'm calling on us to pray, and let's see what God wants to do. To be people of light, we need to know God, but we need to love others. We need to love one another. We need to be a family. We need to carry one another's burdens. We need to laugh together. We need to cry together. We need to work together. We need to serve together. We need to plan together, dream together, pray together. We need to love, love others. What's happening next Sunday is vitally important, friends. In case you've forgotten, next Sunday after the service, we're going to dismiss the service, and I'm asking you to plan to stay because Michael and Valerie are going to renew their vows. You say, what's the big deal, Pastor? People do that all the time. Well, Michael and Valerie never really got, well, they got married, but they didn't, they didn't take vows before God like they want to at an altar. And they've come to Christ since that day that they went to the justice of the peace. And we want to come and celebrate with them. What a, what a beautiful opportunity we have. This will be a spiritual day next week. And so I'm asking you to plan to stay. And we're going to have a reception after. And we're going to have cake. And we're going to eat together. And we're going to fellowship. And friends, that's loving others. And that reminds me that there is a sign-up sheet out there for, for us to sign up to bring food. And I'm encouraging you today to, to, to see that sign-up sheet on your way out. I wasn't here the last couple of weeks to really push this, but, but I, believe, I believe with all that I am that these are the kinds of things that we need to be doing to do life together as the body of Christ. I got a, um, I got a text from Marilyn Kennedy this week, and Marilyn is not able to move herself, and Marilyn has to move Saturday. She said, Pastor, do you think we could rally some, some help? I said, Absolutely. Absolutely. We are family. We are the body of Christ. We can help her. We can help her. We have that privilege, that opportunity. That's what loving others is. You see, it's easy to do that when it's convenient, but sometimes it's not convenient. So I'm asking you, could you come and could you meet at the church next Saturday morning at 8 o'clock? Could, could you do that, men and women? Could, could you meet with us and we'll caravan over and we'll help Marilyn get moved? I'm asking. We're going to be on Facebook this week to remind you. But I just, boy, do I dare do it? Could, could I just ask, is there, any, is there anybody that would come and help me, work with me to help get her moved? Anybody? I see a hand. I see a few. Great. Great. Saturday morning, 8 o'clock. Is that right, Marilyn? Can we do it at 8 and come over? Okay. Okay. So by the time we get to your place, thanks. And guys and, and gals, and let's, let's get her. That's loving others. That, that's what, you think that's living as children of light? That, that sets us apart, friends. You say, wait a minute, Pastor, there's people all over that are helping one another. That doesn't mean you're a Christian just because you help somebody move. Oh, it does if we do it in the Spirit of the Lord, if we do it because we're family, if we do it under His blessing and His guidance. Absolutely does. I'd love it if Delaware would say, if, and I'm talking about the average person in Delaware. I'd love it if the average person would say, you know, I don't know a whole lot about that church, High Point, but man, they really love God, and I, they, they, just love, they just love everybody. I'd be okay if people said that about us. I don't care necessarily if they know what our doctrine is, but if they know that we're set apart and we love God, and there's something about them that they just love God and love people, I'd be good with that. Loving others. Loving others. I was with a friend over the last few weeks, and a friend told me that there was, um, that he had run into a, 
he had run into a black man who was married to a white lady. And he, he, he wasn't sure if it'd be okay for that couple, for him to invite that couple to his church. So I started thinking, could that person, could that couple come to High Point? Absolutely. 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 They have as much of a right to be here as I do. Because we're all sinners saved by God's grace. So now just, and I'm not going to name them, but just start letting your mind run. Think about people who, who, who um, if they walk through the doors, eyebrows would be raised. Are those people welcome here? Mm. I remember growing up in, in, the, in the church where I grew up, and nobody really ever said it, but if somebody came into the church whose life was obviously messed up, the, the, the implication was, why don't you go get your life straight and then you can come to our church? God help us. God help us. Paul wants us to live as people of light. And Paul said in, chapter, in verse 2, live a life filled with love. That's one of our core values is loving others. I can't love others if I have a critical spirit, if I'm judgmental. What about carrying one another's burdens? Do you ever get tired of praying for people who are in trouble? I hope not. That's our privilege. It's our privilege to pay, pray for families who need prayer, for couples whose marriage is on the rocks, for people whose bodies are racked with cancer or other diseases, for people who, have, um, who are in hospitals because of accidents they've been in, or people who are on financial difficulty. It's our privilege to pray for them, friends, and part of loving others is carrying one another's burdens. Know God, love others, serve all. God said to Moses, what's that in your hand? And he said, it's just, just a shepherd's staff. God said, throw it down. He threw it down, and, and it turned into a snake. God said, pick it up. And Moses said, you sure? Moses picked it up by the tail. They tell me that when you pick up a snake, you should pick it up by the, right behind the head. Moses picked it up by the tail, and it became a staff again. And uh, Moses carried that staff the rest of his life. And uh, it was a symbol to the children of Israel that God's presence and God's providence and God's power was for them. It was that staff that he lifted over the Red Sea and it parted. It was that staff that he struck the rock and water came out. What's that in your hand? What is it you could give? God expects every one of us to serve. It's not just for the able-bodied. It's not just for the young. It's not just for the talented. It's not just for the beautiful. God expects every one of us to serve. We shouldn't have to scramble and twist arms to get people to help us at our HCO dinners. We shouldn't have to scramble and twist arms to get people to volunteer to hold babies in a nursery. Those are, almost anybody can hold a baby. Not everybody can sing on the platform. I get that, but, but there's a lot. Of, I walked around the church, and, and next year, <laughs> next year we're going to have to get our act together in the spring, and we're going to have to have some work days, and we're going to have to get some weeds pulled, and we're going to have to get some flowers planted, because I think, I think that part of being set apart and part of being on display for God is having a property that reflects His beauty. And okay, okay, serving all. Knowing God, loving others, serving all. If we live our purpose, we will live as people of light. Let's read it again in closing. 
For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. I don't know what happened, friends. I didn't mean for this to get so heavy. So I I better come down. I I, I think this is good news. Good news about living as people of light. It's not bad. We're real quiet today. So I think, Brian, I think what I'd like to do, brother, I think think I'd like you guys to do lean on me. Can we do that? We we need a little bit of light here. We need a little bit of lift. Uh, But I want to pray for us, okay? Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, how we need you. How we need you. Lord, we want to be people of light. We want to know God. We want to love others. We want to serve all. Help us, God. Help us.